Climbing through rugged volcanic landforms and surrounded by dramatic alpine scenery, one of our most popular day hikes is a journey like nowhere else in the world. This part of Aotearoa is a dual world heritage site which recognises both the natural environment and the cultural and spiritual significance this land has to local Māori. Those that are prepared for this mountain adventure are welcome to experience the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. No mai haere mai. Welcome to this challenging day hike. Your journey will carry you 19.4 kilometers and take seven to eight hours as you climb and descend an active volcano. Although beautiful, it can be dangerous if you're not fully prepared to enter this alpine environment. Extreme weather, terrain and distance have resulted in this track having more search and rescues than any other track in New Zealand. So make certain that you're ready. To help you prepare, plan your walk with Plan My Walk. With over a thousand New Zealand tracks, it makes trip planning easy by combining essential information on each track, advice from other hikers, the weather forecast, and a recommended gear list. Download the app or check out planmywalk.nz. The crossing starts at Mangatepopo car park, which has a four hour parking restriction. So you'll need to book a shuttle or arrange for someone to drop you off and pick you up. Once you start walking, you'll get a nice warm up with a gradual climb, which takes an hour to an hour and a half as it follows Mangatepopo stream up to Soda Springs. Be aware that all water on the track is unsafe for drinking. So take at least two liters with you to last the whole day. In line with the Tiaki promise, it's important that you stay on the track. The landscape of Tongariro is very fragile, so tread lightly and leave no trace. Soda Springs marks the end of the first section and is where the track becomes more challenging. This is a good opportunity to use the toilet before you begin climbing. However, additional toilets are located further along the crossing as it's culturally and environmentally insensitive to go elsewhere. Bring your own toilet paper and hand sanitizer as this isn't provided. As you start to climb, a ranger sign reminds you to consider how everyone is doing and observe what the weather is like at higher elevations. As you continue to climb up the mountain, you'll become more exposed to this weather. On good weather days, you'll be exposed to the harsh sun, so make sure you wear sunscreen, a hat, and sunglasses. On bad weather days, there could be heavy rain, strong winds, snow, or freezing temperatures. Be prepared for this by taking warm and waterproof clothing. If it gets colder or windier than you are prepared for, turning back to the start is okay. Call your transport operator to let them know. The track continues to be well formed as you climb, but it can be a strenuous hour of climbing for those that are less fit. Stay together as a group and be supportive. Things often start to go wrong if someone is left behind. At the top of the staircase, you'll arrive at South Crater, it's a great place to have something to eat, use the toilet, and take in the views. It's also a good time to put on some warm layers if it's cold. On a nice day, South Crater is an easy and enjoyable stroll. In poorer weather, visibility can be an issue, so track markers are positioned to guide you. On the other side, you'll begin to climb up to Red Crater. This requires you to travel up a steep ridgeline that is exposed to the wind. This part of the track is very rough, with loose rocks making it easy to slip. Good footwear and careful steps will make it easier. Keep to the track to reduce kicking rocks down onto others below you. In winter and early spring, this ridgeline is covered in snow and ice, making it much more difficult. You'll need the right skills and equipment. If you do not have alpine skills, equipment and experience, go with a guide. The summit of Red Crater marks the highest and most exposed point on the crossing. On a fine, windless day, it's a good spot to have some lunch and take in the spectacular view. But if the weather is horrendous, it's quicker and easier to head back to the start at Mangatepopo than it is to continue to Kitatahi. Up here, you'll get an appreciation of the extreme volcanic forces that created the stunning scenery. Be aware that even when the track is open, volcanic risk is present. For many people, the descent from Red Crater to the Emerald Lakes is the most challenging part of the day and is also the most common location for injuries to occur on this track. It is a steep 100 metre descent and involves a mix of loose rocks and firmer sections. Slipping over is very common. Strong hiking boots will give you a good grip and the support you need. The best technique for descending the loose rocks is to face directly out from the slope and push your heels in with every step. 
As you descend, you'll come across firmer sections with small stones on the surface, which can act like marbles. To avoid slipping, place your feet carefully. Scuffing your boots to clear the loose stones can be helpful. Zigzagging down the track may also help if your legs are tired. Be mindful of the people around you and help those that are not so confident. The descent will bring you down to the vibrant Emerald Lakes. These lakes are Tonga, a gift to be treasured and looked after. So please respect this by not touching the water, building rock cans or throwing rocks into the lakes. Just take photos, enjoy the view and continue on your journey. Watch out for steam vents in this area as the ground around them can be unstable and severe burns can occur. Stay on the track and you won't have any issues. A quick stroll across Central Crater and a little climb brings you up to Blue Lake, which is Tapu, a sacred and protected lake. So look and admire, but don't touch or swim. This is the halfway point of the crossing. From here you have a 10 km 1,000 m descent down the mountain to Ketetahi Car Park. This will take approximately three hours to complete. Many people find themselves exhausted on this long descent. So stay together and support those who are finding it difficult. Pack a head torch as this may be necessary towards the end, particularly if someone in your group gets injured along the way. If for any reason you decide not to do the crossing, consider other nearby tracks such as Taranaki Falls or Tama Lakes. Both can be found in Plan My Walk and are great alternatives with stunning scenery. They also avoid many of the hazards which are present on the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. If you choose to go, the best time is between October and April, when snow and ice is less likely to be present. Remember to use Plan My Walk to check the weather, alerts and essential gear. Additionally, talk to staff at the Tongariro National Park Visitor Centre for information on the latest track conditions. Now, get out there and safely enjoy one of Aotearoa's best day hikes.